Africa's competitiveness is lagging behind Southeast Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean. Now the areas in which the gap is most evident are infrastructure, education and the macroeconomic stability. This was revealed in Cape Town when the World Economic Forum on Africa unveiled its global competitiveness report. We've got CNBC Africa's editor-in-chief, Godfrey Matizwa, now standing by with Elena Zordi, uh, Zord Gabre Madin, CEO of Eleni Exchanges. Godfrey, I'm hoping that uh, you had one of the producers bring you a glass of water there. Um, but I'm going to throw it straight to you because, of course, we've got limited time on Closing Well now. Thank you, Sam. I'm still holding my water, and I'm certainly hoping that my call does not come back and try to make me look like I'm the person who's being interviewed and has got a bit of a calamity going on. We're now joined, as you said, now by Eleni Gabri Madin. She's CEO of Eleni LLC. Now, that's interesting because in January, when we talked to her, or at least at the end of last year, she was working with the Ethiopian Commodities Exchange. She's branched out because Africa is presenting opportunity. And this opportunity is now taken into establishing a pan African commodity exchange. How far have you gone? The last time we talked in Jan, you were trying to put the financing together. That's I right. now know that you have tied that up. But tell me some of the big names that you've got on board and tell me what you've been doing since then. Okay, thank you, Godfrey. Yes, uh, since January, we have closed financing uh, on a seed round of financing for this uh, new company uh, which is going to be the premier exchange builder uh, for frontier markets putting together commodity exchanges and for that matter revamping some of the illiquid uh, stock exchanges on the continent right. so we've recently closed uh, or in January end of January we closed financing with Morgan Stanley which as you know is a global financial uh, institution yeah. focusing on markets uh, as well as uh, IFC, the International Financial uh, Corporation uh, which is part of the World Bank uh, private sector uh, arm of the World Bank Group. Uh, and then very recently, in fact uh, last week, we have closed financing with 8 Miles Fund which is a new private equity fund uh, set up by uh, Sir Bob Geldof. Right. So I think uh, where we are now is uh, now delivering on Africa's promise, so and to did, speak, since we're did. here uh, at the WEF in, yeah. in Cape Town. And Africa's promise on commodities is immense. Okay. We're only at a quarter of the yield potential. Absolutely. Uh, we still have uh, untapped land, 69% of our land, arable land, is yet un un uncultivated. Yeah. So we've got a vast potential to really uh, overtake even the Brazils uh, and other major agricultural production uh, emerging markets and I think commodity exchanges will, are going to be part of that solution. So when do we see you beginning to make an impact on pricing? When do we see beginning, when would we start seeing prices from LNA LLC coming on board and us showing them on CNBC Africa? Well, I certainly hope that that will be uh, within the next uh, 18 months. Uh, we are now embarking on some country projects. We've seen a tremendous amount of interest at country level. I think the Ethiopia experience showed uh, that this, uh, this idea of a commodity exchange is fundamental. Uh, it's been very exciting here at WEF to see how Nigeria has committed to uh, putting up a commodity exchange. Uh, Ghana is putting up a uh, very interested. Uh, Tanzania has also voiced interest. Mozambique, many other Botswana. countries. Uh, Botswana, etc. So, so I think all over Africa we're going to see a common wave of uh, markets that are going to be transparent, yeah. that are going to serve the needs of those who are in production yeah. as well as in consumption. Just to give you an example, in Ethiopia, uh, over uh, the, the four years of operation of the exchange that we set up in 2008, yeah. the share, farmer share of the final price of coffee, which is for 15 million coffee farmers, went from 38% of the final price yeah. to 65% of the final price. Fantastic. Uh, you know, that's a, an incredible transformation. And so I'm hoping that uh, when we look at CNBC in about two to three years, uh, we won't only be seeing uh, Brent crude uh, from the world yeah, market yeah. or uh, other uh, world prices. We'll also have the world looking at our African commodity prices, which have emerged here on African soil. Soya beans, on maize, etc. Et so it's beans, an important point maize. you bring because yes. we had a debate in the afternoon here on CNBC Africa. Yes. And uh, one of the things that they were discussing then with the Nigerian uh, uh, agriculture minister, we also had uh, Chris Kirubi, a former Kenya Manufacturers Association chairman. And one of the points he raised was the unfairness of some of the pricing that we have seen, particularly yes. as they relate to African products. That's we right. know there are problems with uh, Kenyan tea. We know there are problems with the coffee prices that we see on board because the farmers get very little. That's How right. do we fix that? And what role will you play in that? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, commodity in Africa has been considered both a blessing and a curse. And for the most part, it's been a curse uh, in some sense because those who produce it are the ones who reap the least benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And I think the solution to that is transparency. 
If you can use technology, a mobile application, um, your, your own uh, broadcast uh, information sure. to level the playing field so that the producer knows what the national price is, what the international price is, then they price accordingly and they will rationally uh, start to squeeze that marketing margin which is going now to the middleman. Yeah. Uh, so I think that um, you know it's not a zero-sum game. We tend to think if the farmers are better off, somebody else will be worse off. Yeah. That's not necessarily the case because if we have more reliable markets, more transparent uh, pricing, more efficient delivery systems, yeah. then everybody will be better off. Uh, whether it's the processors who will be able to uh, process more, uh, use their capacity uh, of uh, machinery better, yeah. whether it's the exporters who can uh, go into forward markets and hedge yeah. their risk, yeah. Yeah. and of course the producers themselves so it's it's a it's a expanding the pie and of course governments can take less in terms of tax Eleni uh, <laughs> CEO of Eleni LC talking to us about her plans to set up a commodity exchange she said to me here that it will be up and running in 18 months and I should certainly hold her to account